get a different one. Of course, you know, I, right. at first, you know, you think, well, my goodness, we've pushed, you've had that one and now we're up here and they're over there. Yeah. I said, I reckon, well, I said, why don't you want that one? He said, because see right here, it says Merry Xmas. Mm. He said, they took Christ out of it. I don't want this book. All right. Good thinking. Amen. I thought that's pretty good. Amen. Out of the mouths of babes. Huh? Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Yeah. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've been talking about making a difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. I was going to wrap this up last week. The Lord led a different direction. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk to you this morning, going along those same lines. I want to share a phrase with you that many of you have heard, and you probably wonder what this has to do with what we've been talking about. But there's an old saying, as a matter of fact, it was uh, originated in Jamaica in the early 18th century, as far as 18th century, as far as the information I can find. But you'll recognize it: "Monkey see, monkey do." Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. You probably heard it. You probably used it. <laughs> Amen. Come on. And according to history, it's been in American culture since about 1920 or so. And the saying refers to the act of mimicry it, as, as far as imitating someone else, usually with limited knowledge and or concern of the consequences. In other words, doing something one sees another do. Right. Amen? Come on. And that goes along with what we've been talking about, about how we affect other people. Yes. The, the uh, influence that we have in their lives. Amen. How many times have you heard a child, or maybe you used it before, a child would say a bad word or maybe they did something they weren't supposed to do and their excuse for that brother Dave was, right. Mommy does that. Yeah. Daddy does that. Amen. I've heard Daddy say that word. Amen. I've heard Mommy say that word. Right. Amen. So children mimic what they see adults do. And if we've ever lived in a day where we need better role models than we have now, we need, it, we need it today. Amen. That's right, brother. Our children look up to what? They look up to Hollywood. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. They look up to sports figures. Right. And all you have to do is see the headlines that comes out of the NFL this year to know that those are not the ones they should be looking up to. Amen. Right. Don't tell them what the percentage of substance abuse and alcohol abuse as far as the world of sports goes. Amen. You give, uh, you give uh, practically teenagers millions of dollars and set them loose and they just don't know how to handle it. Amen. Right. So, and we've got, you know, kids and that's who they look up to. That's their idol. Right. We have, they look up to uh, rock singers, right. oh. pop singers, whatever, country singers. We need some spiritual role models for children to look up to. Amen. Got it. No wonder we see children doing the things that they're doing. They're just acting out the things they see from Hollywood, right. the things they see from video <laughs> games, the things they see at home from mom and daddy. Amen. All of the different things that they see, they mimic those things. They're not seeing enough godly things coming from mom and daddy. Right. They're not seeing enough godly things coming from their parents, from their grandparents, yeah. from their, their, their people that, that influences their life. Yeah. And just as we've talked about those who had a positive influence, you know, we talked about who we, we talked about David, how the difference that he made. Whenever it seemed like everybody, you know, was too scared, doesn't seem like they were. They was all too scared to fight Goliath. We've seen how people that would seem insignificant made a big difference. Amen. What I want to talk to you about this morning for just a few minutes is that not only do you have the great ability, that's not the word I'm looking for, but not only do you have the great potential, that's it, to be an influence for good, but you also have that same potential to be an influence for bad, Amen. should you choose to be that. Right. Not only can you influence people in a good way, but you can influence people in a bad way. That's right. Amen. Amen. And that's what we want to talk about for a few minutes today. We've talked about how that throughout history and throughout the Word of God we see mm -hmm. how that, that one that stood for something when no one else would made a difference. Right. We see that how that taking a stand when it was not popular made a great difference. Going against popular opinion made a great difference. Yes, Swimming against the tide made a great difference. We talked about oh. the disciples, how that they were rough and rugged men, how that these men that Jesus called and they followed Him. Right. And they mimicked the things they saw Jesus do. 
How that they turned the world upside down according to the book of Acts. Come on, brother. We talked about David. We talked about Jesus, how he must needs go through mm. Samaria to make a difference in the life of one woman that had jumped from one man to the other looking for something to fill that void and to quench that thirst in her life. We see how that same woman who Jesus made a difference in her life, she leaves her water pot, runs into town, and she makes a difference in other yeah. people's life with her testimony. Uh -huh. Amen. Your testimony makes a difference in other people's lives. Yes, sir. You can influence people to the good, right. for the good. Amen. That's the truth. Influence. The positive influence you can have. Right. The negative influence that you can have. Amen. And a prime example of a negative influence, and I thought, this, I thought of this whenever I was mama like this. I thought of this whenever I was putting together the notes. Mm -hmm. And here in Kentucky, and I guess other southern states, it's the same, but superstitions. Amen. You know, I dropped a dish rag. A tramp is coming. My nose is itching. My yeah. hand's itching. I'm going to get some money. Scratch it on wood. Knock on wood. Whatever. Yeah. Don't go under that ladder. Turn around and go back. I just seen a black cat. Amen. I broke a, a mirror. going to be seven years of bad luck. A, a, a picture fell off of the wall. Somebody's going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd Mama get that? Her mom and daddy. Where'd her mom and daddy get that? Their mom and daddy. Right. Where'd their mom and daddy get that? Their mama and daddy. You can pass these things down and they influence the influence that they had then yeah. still influence it today because it's being passed down. Yeah. Just like you can pass down good and godly things, you can pass down bad and ungodly things. Right. And they continue many, many families are plagued with alcoholism. Right. Because children were raised in that and they choose that whenever they grow up. It influenced them. They turn to booze. They turn to drugs. Many children that are in abusive homes run into the same kind of thing when they're adults because that's the kind of life they knew. They become the abusers instead of the abusing. They become the ones that do the abusing. It doesn't always happen that way, but more times than not, it has. Because of the influence that others have on them. <laughs> we talked about David and Goliath. Have you ever wondered why all of Israel was so afraid of Goliath? Mm. Or maybe I should put it like this. Do you ever scratch your head and wonder why they were all hiding from him? You see, fear breeds fear. Right. Just like courage breeds courage. Amen. And righteousness breeds righteousness. Yes, sir. Where was their leader? Where was their leader? He was hiding in his tent. If Saul had have stood up being the man that he was supposed to be, the leader that he was supposed to be, uh -huh. and went out, then his courage, you see, courage don't mean you're scared, that you're not scared. Right. Courage does not mean that there's no fear. Mm -hmm. Courage means that in spite of the fear, you stand against evil. In spite of the fear that you may have inside of you, you don't allow that to make you hide. You stand up anyway. You may be scared inside, but you're walking toward the enemy. That's courage. Courage does not mean you have no fear. Courage means that in spite of the fear, you go on anyway. As a man in his household, he's supposed to be the one that shows forth the courage. Come on. When the wife screams, there's a mouse. The man's not supposed to run and get on the kitchen table. Right. He's supposed to go and take care of the mouse. Mm -hmm. Even though, if my, you probably can't get them to admit this, Brother Sleeves, but even though most men probably have a little fear of a mouse. But they go and do it anyway because that's the man's job. When you hear a bump in the night and your wife pokes you in the ribs and say, Hey, I heard somebody. I heard something. I heard something rattling around. Mm -hmm. The man gets up out of the bed yeah. and he goes and looks. Not because he's fearless. Mm -hmm. Amen? But that's courage because even though he might think, well, I don't really want to see what it is, but I'll go anyway. Yeah. Amen? I'm not going to sit here and hide. I'm going to get up and go. That's what Saul was doing. Mm -hmm. And his fear had caused all of it. It had spread. You see, fear, bad attitude, it's as contagious as a cold. You know what he's talking about? Don't get around me. You might get, you might get this cold I've got. Amen. Don't hug me. I'm sick. Yeah. You'll find the same thing happening if you get around a bunch of scaredy people. 
right. of people that are afraid because fear breeds fear. Right. Courage breeds... How many times in battles because a general stood up, even though there was some fear inside of him somewhere, he stood up in courage and marched forth. And because of that, the men he, that was under him, Brother Sleeves, they saw the courage in their captain. Amen. They were scared. Right. But because of their captain, they're going to go too. Come on. They might have been scared every step of the way. Right. But courage breeds courage. Oh, we need some spiritual courage today. Amen. We need some people with some spiritual backbone that ain't afraid of the devil that'll stand up and take a stand. And then that'll spread, see? Amen. We need some people with courage. Yes. Because fear breeds fear. I was thinking about this, and that's what it has to do with my sermon, but I wanted to share it with you if I can get it right. A man and a woman was upstairs. They were in bed. It was late midnight or after. And the woman, the wife, she heard a noise downstairs. She pokes him in the side like I talked about while the phone says, Honey, I heard something downstairs. You need to go see what it is. And of course, he being the man of the house, he didn't pull the covers up over his head and say, I'm too scared to go. All right. He gets up. And he prepares to go downstairs to see what this noise is. And he hears something now. Mm -hmm. Something's going on down there. And he says, well, I'm going to go down there. I don't want to go empty-handed. Yeah. So he gets in the closet and he rummages around. He gets out his granddaddy's old rifle. Yeah. Hasn't worked in years. <laughs> but whoever's downstairs don't know that. All right. Amen. So he thinks this will scare him. They'll see me with this gun. If there's anybody down there, it'll scare him. Yeah. So he gets the gun out of the closet. He tiptoes. He tells his wife, you stay here. Talking about courage. Mm -hmm. Even though he's afraid. Yeah. He's got a gun that's broke. Tiptoes down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Finally gets to the foot of the stairs. And as he starts to turn the corner, his wife yells from the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Honey, be careful. You know that old gun don't work. <laughs> Talking about courage. <laughs> Even though he was afraid, mm -hmm. he got up and went anyway. Yeah. Even though Saul was afraid, he should have got up and been an example of courage anyway. And if he had of, then that would have spread to the children of Israel that were afraid. They were afraid because their king was afraid. They were following the leader. Yeah. We, 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 we uh, preached a message sometime back called follow the leader. And that's what they were doing. People are following. You ever heard somebody say, I feel like somebody's watching me. Yeah. I wish you felt like that more often. Amen. Maybe you wouldn't act the way you do sometimes. Oh, wow. I wish I felt that way more often. Maybe I wouldn't act the way that I do sometimes. Maybe if we realize that there indeed is someone watching our life, Brother Sleeves. Maybe if we indeed realize that there, are some, there is someone that we are influencing either for the good or for the bad. And they have their eyes on you, Brother Dave. You think you make no difference in anybody's life, but somebody somewhere is watching you. How you react, the things that you say, the way that you live. Right. And that influences them. Amen. You can make a difference in people's lives. Yes, for the good or for the bad. Exactly. And Saul was making a difference for the bad. His leadership had already went south. And there are many people, just as we saw in history, how people made a decision mm -hmm. and they made a difference. We talked about Abraham Lincoln yeah. and how he decided that if there's any way he could ever do anything about slavery, he would. And God put him in the position to do it, and he did. All right. We talked about a lot of different people in the Bible that made a difference. We can talk today about people who made it, who did bad things right. and had a bad influence, and we're still living with that today. Mom. Just a few of those. How about Charles Darwin? Yeah. Born in February of 1809, died in April of 1882. Mm. Put together a theory, mm. no evidence, just theory, yeah. that there was no God, that man evolved from some lower species. Mm. Dead since 1882. Yeah. His bad influence still lives on today. Amen. Still, the great controversy between Darwinism and creation. Right. Amen. True. How about Adolf Hitler? All right. The leader of the Nazi party that others followed and his hatred, what did it breed? More hatred. Right. His hatred caused more hatred. And there's still some people with his way of thinking today. Amen. Amen. True. Prejudice. You get around some people that are racist. Right. It won't be long till you'll find yourself being racist. Amen. You can't just hang with whoever you want. I know you think you can, and it won't rub off on you, but it will. Amen. 
They will influence you or you will influence them. One or the other. Right. How about this one? You might remember this name. Madeline Murray O'Hare. Her movement to remove prayer from public school. Right. And we still deal with that today. Amen. And I am in no way comparing these three people saying they're the same, that their evil was on the same level. The only thing that I'm telling you today is these people it made, it made a bad influence, had a bad influence on others, and it still is influencing our society today. Amen. People that chose bad things, people that were a bad influence, people who their fear True. caused more fear. Right. People who their hatred caused more hatred. Amen. We need some people that'll breed love. Amen. Amen. We need some people that'll breed righteousness. Yes. The Bible is full of people. Sons who followed in the footsteps of their fathers, and not just their fathers, but other people. Absolutely. That clave, that held on to the ungodly things of the past yeah. because they were influenced by them. How about Lucifer? Come on. <clears throat> he rebelled. Right. According to the word of God, he took a third of the angels with him. Amen. Because he's rebellion. That's right. It caused more rebellion. Mm -hmm. exactly. Rebellion breeds rebellion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You ever seen, probably not, I'm probably not in real life, or maybe you went on Black Friday and saw this, a mob of people, and everything's going pretty smooth until one or two of them start getting a little rowdy. Right. They'll get rowdy and vocal, then the ones next to them, they'll see them do it, and they'll start doing it, until finally the whole crowd's out of control. Right. That's the way it might have been whenever the crowd cried, crucify Jesus. Yes, sir. It might have started with a little bit of the crowd over here, and then their hatred... And their, their thirst for blood spread across the entire crowd. That's what happens with our attitudes, with our attributes. And if we don't allow Jesus to shine through us, and we allow our old carnal ways to have to, to rule the throne of our heart, yeah. that's how we influence others. That's how we have you ever been you ever got up and you was in a great mood till you got in with somebody else? They were in a bad mood. And by the time they got done, you was in a bad mood. Amen. Amen. Right. Because it's catching. Yes, sir. You influence others. Amen. And just as had, just as you have the great potential to be a make a difference for good, you have the same great potential to make a difference for bad. Yes, sir. We talked about Abraham and Lot before, mm. so this is nothing new for you. But whenever Abraham and Lot decided they were going to split ways because they couldn't get along, or their herdsmen, there was strife between their herdsmen. Mm. The Bible says that Abraham said unto Lot, and I'm in Genesis 13 and 8, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and your herdmen. For we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold, all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor. And Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, right. and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Now Lot goes and pitches his tent toward Sodom. Yeah. Why? Because Sodom and Gomorrah, the land looked like Egypt. I ask you this question today, and most of y'all here probably know it. Those out there listening may not. How did Lot know what the land of Egypt looked like? Because he followed Abraham down into Egypt once. Genesis 12 and 9 says, And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And it teaches us that because of the famine that was in the land, Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. We know from verse 4 of that same chapter that when Abraham left his home going out on the journey that God sent him out on, that Lot went with him. So Abraham goes down into Egypt and Lot follows. When it comes time for Lot and Abraham to separate ways sometime later, 
Lot chooses to go to Sodom and Gomorrah or that direction because why? It looked like Egypt. How did he know that it looked like Egypt? He knows that because he went to Egypt with Abraham once. Amen. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's following in your footsteps. Amen. You are influencing someone either for the good or for the bad. It's your choice which one of those that you do. You can't blame it on anyone else. Your influence, you will give an account for that. When you stand before the judgment seat of God, you will give an account of the way that you influence others. Whether we allow our light to shine or whether we sit on it, put it out, and we're a bad influence Amen. to others. That's true. Listen to this. I want to give you a few scriptures. You don't have to go there. You can write them down. 2 Kings 3 and 1. It says, Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned for 12 <clears throat> years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father, and like his mother, for he had put away the image of Baal that his father had made. But, this is what it says, Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. Did you hear that? He cleaved to the sins of another. Do you get that? Sin breeds sin. He grabbed a hold of. He wouldn't let go of. He clave to the sins of Jeroboam. Amen. 2 Corinthians 22 and 2 says, 40 and 2 years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother, mother's name was Athleah, the daughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways, listen to this, of the house of Ahab. For his mother was a counselor to, was his counselor to do wickedly. Did you hear that? Yeah. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord like the house of Ahab. Amen. For they were his counselors. They were his bad influence. Mm -hmm. After the death of his father to his destruction. So we see how that other people influenced these men in bad ways. Yeah. And they carried on that wickedness. They carried on that evil. Same way today with you. If you are a bad influence on someone, more times than not, they're going to take that same bad influence and spread that to somebody else. Right. That's why it's so important for us to realize others watch our life. Amen. There's an old song that they used to sing, you're the only Bible that some people read. Amen? Amen. And it's the truth. That's it. All the proof you need is to visit the houses this morning where people that didn't go to church yeah. and listen to their excuses. Right. Some of them will say they were sick. Some of them will say they didn't have time. Some of them will say it's their only day to rest. Uh -huh. But a lot of them will say, well, I was hurt by Mr. So-and-so. Hmm. I was hurt by this one. Because I seen the way that this one lived hmm. whenever they wasn't at church. Yeah. Uh-oh. I seen the way that this one lived whenever they weren't at church. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Because of others' influences. Now I know that won't stand on Judgment Day. Amen. But I'd heap rather. I'd heap rather the Lord ask somebody, you know, how you got saved, and they say, What well, was Brother David? His influence. Hmm. Then for somebody to say, Why didn't you get for the Lord to say, Why didn't you get saved? And they say, Well, it's them hypocrites. Yeah. Some people, they led me the wrong way. The blind lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. The answer to Cain's question is still the same today. When God came looking for his brother, he said, Am I my brother's keeper? You better believe you are. Amen. Amen. No man is an island. Right. The Bible says in Romans 14 and 7 that none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Aww. Proverbs 27 and 17 says, Iron sharpeneth iron. Yeah. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Do you hear that? Yes. You affect your friend. Right. That's what the Spirit's been telling us. Amen. With the making a difference. Watch your steps. Watch your actions. Yeah. Watch your words. Be careful, little tongue, what you say. Yeah. Somebody's watching. You're an influence to others. Yes, sir. Just as you can be a bad, inf a good influence, you can be a bad influence. I always like to talk about Elijah and Elisha because what a great influence Elijah must have been on the life of Elisha. Because when it got time for Elijah to be called away, he turns to Elisha and he says, What is it that you want? What can I do for you? What do you want me to do? Yeah. And trust me, 
Elisha believed that Elijah had the power to do it because he had saw him. He had seen him mm. heal. He had seen him do miracles. This is the man that shut up heaven. Amen? Right. Called down fire. Slew the prophets of Baal. Right. He said, I want a double portion of Amen. your spirit. I want what you've got. Yeah. I want a double portion of it. Amen. I wonder how many people today stand back and look at our life and say, I want what they've got. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this this morning. Is what you've got worth having? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Would people sit back and say, I want that. Mm -hmm. Or do they sit back and look at the church and say, I don't want any part of that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Good influence, bad influence. Mm -hmm. No man liveth unto himself or dieth unto himself. All right. <clears throat> the Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 21, <clears throat> For even hereunto we are, were, we, were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example yeah. that ye should follow mm -hmm. his steps. Yes. We leave footprints. Long after we're dead and gone, our influence lives on. Yes. Amen? Amen? Surely you know that. You can see that through. Well, the ones that I mentioned here today, they've been dead a long time, but yeah. others that have influenced not just this nation, but the world. And their footprint stays behind. Amen. Their influence stays behind. So will yours. Right. Brother Hinton is still as much of an influence today on my life as he ever was. He's been gone for years. Paul would say to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. If someone's following you, are you leading them in the right direction? Have you ever went somewhere with someone, you're taking two vehicles, and the one that's supposed to know the way gets in front and they're driving? Mm -hmm. And you follow them, and you think they know where they're going, so where they turn, you turn. Mm -hmm. So if they don't go the right direction, both of you get lost. That's the way it is. Amen. Right. If people are following you, if you're not making if you're not taking the right turns, if you're not heading in the right direction, you're leading them in the opposite direction, the way they're Amen. supposed to go. Like Brother Bill tells the story of he's coming home from work one morning, it was foggy, snowy, something. All he could see was some taillights in front of him. And he thought, Well, I'll follow them taillights. <laughs> so he follows them and follows them and directly the taillights go this way, so he goes that way. The car in front of him or the truck one had run off into the ditch and Brother Bill followed right along behind him. Because we followed, followed the one that he thought, well, they, they're going the right direction. I'll just follow them. Mm. In society today, we have people reenacting what they see from Hollywood, sports, video games, and more. Idols, heroes, role models, all of these people they put up on pedestals that are ungodly, unrighteous. If we ever needed godly people to stand in an hour, we need them to stand in this hour. If we ever needed the church to wake up, get off her pew, and be the positive influence she's supposed to be, we need it now. Amen. If there's no... I don't know what greater evidence we can have than the terrible, the terrible things that we saw in the news this past week. Right. We need people living, standing for something. I made this statement this week, and I don't know if anyone ever, ever else ever said it or not, if it was just spirit-inspired for me. But a, a people only want a godless society until they have a godless society. Right. Think about that. They only want it till they get it. Once they get a godless society, trust me, they will not want that. Right. People with no morals, people with no, no care for life. Amen. That's what you get when you have a godless society. Yes, sir. And you will only want it until you get it. Amen. What kind of influence are you? The Bible says in Matthew 6 and 23, and I'm closing, that if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness... How great is that darkness? If you put out the light, if you refuse to let it shine, how great is that darkness? Because right. when you don't shine your light, you no longer expel darkness. Amen. You just blend in. Right. You just blend in. Yes. I don't want to blend in. Amen. I don't want to blend in with darkness, Brother Dave. That's right. I want His light to shine through me. I want Jesus to 
shine through me, Amen. to love through me, to live through me, to influence others in a positive way. I want to be conscious of the fact that somebody's watching me. I want to be conscious of the fact that whenever I'm out somewhere and things don't go the way I want them to go, and I know every one of us are guilty of this. I don't stand up here pointing a finger at you and say that this, I've never done this. I have. I want to act the way I'm supposed to act whenever I'm out in public. I want to be the light and the witness that I'm supposed to be whenever I'm around others. Amen. That should be all of our... That should be our goal. Yes. To be a positive influence. Amen. You will never cease being an influence. The only thing that changes is whether your influence is a good one or a bad one. Right. You will always influence others. Amen. Can I share one more thing with you before we go? Yes. I heard this song... Kind of comical, but kind of hit, drives home the point. Jeff Tree's band, I think Jeff Tree's wrote it, but the name of it's Road Rage. Mm. It says, well, I was sitting in a traffic jam late for Sunday school, and I'm supposed to teach the class about the golden rule. Mm. When the guy behind me started acting crazy and blowing his horn, mm. so I gave him one of those ugly looks like I wish he was never born. Mm. Now, it didn't faze him. He was wearing a smile and blowing the horn some more. Yeah. So I pitched a fit and yelled a bit, and he quit blowing that horn. I was feeling pretty good about the way I shut that old boy up mm -hmm. until I remembered the bumper sticker that I had on the back of my old truck. The bumper sticker said this, Honk if you love Jesus. Twice if you go to church. Three more times if you want to go to heaven. And how about a smile if you love the Lord? Amen. Then he goes on and says the traffic... Started moving and not a minute too soon. I was feeling really bad how I treated that boy and acted like a fool. Mm -hmm. I couldn't wait to get to the altar and the whole church met me there to pray. But when I got up, there he stood. He was the visiting minister that day. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Since when he began preaching, he said he had a divine inspiration and he preached on the golden rule. Mm -hmm. You can imagine my perspiration when he was preaching to you know who. <laughs> So the moral of this story, it's simple, don't you see? Yeah. If you've got a Jesus sticker on the back of your car, be what you ought to be. Amen. Amen. True. Yeah. I thought that's pretty good. Amen. Be what you ought to be. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, then, then you don't have to worry about acting. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Amen. It's not an act. It's that's just who you are. That's good. Amen. Let your light so shine before men Amen. so that they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. They'll see your good works yes. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Right. Someone else have something this morning.